Hello and thanks for tuning in. I am that nerd dad, Joe Williamson, and this is that nerd dad podcast where we talk parenting, pop culture, and politics. We got a guest today. Oh, do we got a guest? We got uh, Jen Palazzo, Jennifer Whedon Palazzo, founder of Mom Cave TV, who you've heard me talk about uh, basically at the end of every show. As I've started a little partnership with them, got the founder on to talk parenting today. And the conversation's wide-ranging, and it's awesome, and it's fun, and uh, I think you're really going to enjoy it as well as her. So, stick around for that. Before I throw to it, just a quick favor, quick request, quick ask. Uh, wherever you're watching or listening to this, there's probably a subscribe or follow button. I'd greatly appreciate it if you hit that, as well as if you can give me a five-star thumbs up, leave a comment, something to that effect. Always appreciated. Uh, so, let's get to Jen. Are you listening? Damn. Uh. All right, everybody. As promised, my guest today is Jennifer Whedon Palazzo. I hope I pronounced that all correctly. You did. You did. It's a mouthful. She is Jen at Mom Cave TV. (laughs) Jen, thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. Hey, I'm so excited to finally talk to you in person. We've been been talking and doing some stuff online together. So this is cool. Yeah, I'm kind of a, I don't want to, I don't know if I'm your newest contributor, but I'm one of the newest contributors to Mom Cave TV. Started blogging for you guys recently, um, and we're, we're working on uh, whether or not we're going to get some video engagement going in the near future, uh, which is awesome. So for those of us who are unfamiliar with Mom Cave TV, talk to me about it. Oh, wow. There's, there's so much I could say. I don't know where to begin, but basically, um, when I started having kids, I'm not going to say how many years ago now. I was reading all the the mommy blogs and stuff out there, and they basically made me feel like shit. Can I can I say shit? You can mm-hmm. say shit. You can okay. say fuck anything you want on this one. Ooh, you can say the c word if you want. Ooh, okay, that's one of my favorite things. To, I like to say "see you next Tuesday." I love that expression. But anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> it'd be weird if we just went from mom cave TV to dropping c bombs. No, I know we better let, let's just hold back a little. It is daytime. What I was saying is, I felt like shit because. I, I thought I was prepared, you know, I did, I planned to have kids. It took a long time to get to have kids. I was in, you know, not a young person and, um, oh, I lost Joe. I hope that, that, no, 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 I, oh. that was on purpose. <laughs> I've, I, I've g- yeah, given you center perfect. stage. Ooh, okay. I, I, I produce as we go on the fly here. Wow. This is cool. This is very right? cool. Okay. So yeah, it felt <laughs> crappy and I started writing about my experience feeling like, what the heck? I just, I've never felt so disorganized, so confused about what my role in life is, what's the right thing to do, how to do all the things. And yeah, I, you know, even though I was fully prepared, I was, I was not prepared. So started writing about that, started making videos about that with some of my friends and mom cave was sort of born out of that. Now, when you started, roughly what year did you start? I'm going to say 2011 ish. Holy, so we're talking like Vine? Was it like I Vine? Had Vine. I had Vine for sure. It's gone. It's over. Well, I know. Was it, were, so did it, when you said you were making video content, was it for YouTube? Yeah. Was it for Vine? Was it for Instagram? Where were you? Where, right. where did you get started in that road? Well, YouTube was the first thing. And it was a funny story because at first I was writing this little web series and a friend of mine said, I'm in this writer's group. We meet and have a great time once a month. Come to our group. So I thought it's in like a smoky basement of a bar, right? <laughs> And I show up at the address and it was Google YouTube headquarters in New York City. And we go into a conference room <laughs> and all these like real writers and actor, director, producer people are reading their stuff, which was all like very edgy and cool. And then here I bring in this like comic mom thing with like poop jokes and stuff. And I was, I had to go through with it at that point, right? But, um, people laughed and they liked it and they started volunteering to help me produce it. And so from that moment, I had a a director of photography like that and an art director and we made it like, like little episode, like little TV episodes. And that was on YouTube. Um, But you know, things have changed in those years and making little TV episodes is not the current trend and YouTube is not the current place. And so mom cave became lots of things. And you know, now we're a bunch of things. 
Now, momcavetv.com is kind mm -hmm. of the central hub for all of those things. In yeah. addition to the fact that you can download the Mom Cave TV app, correct? I have an app. Yes. You have an app. Um, the app Jen is has on. made it in this world. She has an app. That's how you know you made it when you have an app. Have an I, app. I haven't. I don't have one yet, so I'm. I'm I don't just know if shit. anyone I mean, downloaded my app, but you all. I did. Oh, good. Okay, so someone has downloaded my app. You have <laughs> one download because you sent me the link, and it was .com, and I'm up in Canada, eh? so I had to Ooh. go to .ca, and it was available there, which was amazing. So amazing. So it's available in Canada. Okay, so yeah, it's on um, Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Android TV. Mom Cave okay. TV. And you can find all of our videos there. And Joe's writing is on the blog. And hopefully some of your videos will be on there soon. And it's, it's in all the places. That's awesome. No, that's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing start. And um, I think the idea of the, uh, the Pinterest parent is yes. hella intimidating. And it's super annoying. Um, it's and the, the Pinterest parent has evolved into kind of the Instagram parent. Now, mm -hmm. I think there are two different to me, they're two different spe species of parent. Mm -hmm. uh, when I think Pinterest, I think of like super, like super housewife. Like crafts and cookies and Martha Stewart approved things. And then like when I think Instagram, I think, oh, this person has an unlimited travel budget. Oh my to God. take their kids everywhere. And fashion and, budget and Botox and budget. And there's no COVID restrictions anywhere they go. No. no. Um, it's, it's two different things. Both equally shitty. <laughs> Both equally make me feel shitty. I don't know. <laughs> they're ter I'll say it. They're terrible parents. Yeah. Okay, right. We're the good parents. We're cool. We're, parents. You know, we're casual. We wear hoodies. We're both wearing hoodies. This, you know, not planned. Not, not planned at all. all. I look like I'm in a serial killer's basement. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, um, like... <laughs> I mean, that's how you have to get like get through the day. But also, what are your kids going to learn out of like having the perfect house and the perfect diet and travel experience? They're not going to learn from that. They're going to learn from watching their parents like handle things with grace and laugh and and also like it, it takes away from the fact that like when i lose my shit on my kids which happens mm -hmm. believe it or not it happens it uh i feel terrible mm -hmm. and i'm like oh i shouldn't have done that right because instagram joe here is instagram way better version he's yeah. he wouldn't yell at his kids mm -mm. he's a gentle parent what do you yeah. think of the, the phrase gentle parenting? Because it's kind of all the rage right now. I know. It is all the rage. And and I get it. And I, I like the I, some of the ideas behind it. Um, because I I didn't have the most gentle of parents myself. I mean, my, my dad and I had a fraught relationship because he was the opposite of a gentle parent. But <laughs> <laughs> now and now. So, you know, I decided, like, to go the route of trying very hard not to not to use corporal punishment unless absolutely necessary <laughs> and you know try to keep you know from losing my temper i suck at it i'm not great at it but that is the conscious choice i've made as a parent i guess that's a little bit in the vein of gentle parenting all that said like let's not go too far here they are the kids and we're the parents and they need boundaries and they need discipline and those little I almost said the, call them fuckers, but that would be bad. Those those little kids sometimes they don't listen. Sometimes the you darling have angels. Yell. Sometimes the darling angels don't respond to the gentleness. I'm gonna yeah, get I'm gonna get roasted for this, aren't I? No, fuck them. I don't care. Sometimes like, you have to yell. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes you have to yell your way. Okay, a total totally weird analogy, but here's here it is. Do you ever watch uh, the dog whisper? Yes. Okay. Sometimes when he's get training a dog, he goes. Tss! Mm -hmm. And he's like, it's just to break their psyche. I think sometimes when I yell, it's literally just to break the train of thought because they're in full on tantrum mode. And I yell, everyone shuts up for a second. They hear themselves think and they go, I'm being unreasonable. Yet I think you probably have <laughs> more success at that than I do because you have the dad voice. Dads I have a dad can voice. get that low, like, dad voice can shut them up. I feel like mom voice, they just yell more all over me. It becomes a yelling match, and then dad has to come out. What the hell is going on in here? And I hate that. I mean, on the one hand, I'm grateful because his dad voice stops the issue. But on the other hand, I feel like then I'm one of the kids too. And yeah. so so that all is that's a dynamic we always deal with. Uh, interesting dynamic because then it's like, well, does he have the power in this situation? Does she have the power? Because sometimes, like, I defer sometimes. Go ask your mom. 
I'm right. not sure what she would do in this situation. But then it's also sometimes it's like, I need a little support here. Do you want me to intervene? Sometimes I'm like, I want the kid to cry it out. But mom comes in and I'm like, ah, you, you broke my rhythm. You broke yeah. my rhythm. <laughs> I was trying to prove a point here. Right, right. I know. It's really hard. And that's also one of the most difficult things is like, not only are you taking on raising another human and everything that's with that, but ideally you're doing it with another adult human. And that brings its whole, you know, you guys have your own histories, your own personalities, and like navigating all of that and raising the kids is a little, little rough. And then trying to have those little sidebars, like, should we have done that? I don't know. Totally. I don't know if we should have done that. <laughs> I we know. have overstepped there. Maybe we totally. owe them an apology. Right, right. Let's go back to corporal punishment. You said you'd <laughs> institute it occasionally. Do you have like something in the in the, the, the living room, like, you know, in case of emergency break glass, um, like a paddle, yeah. for example? I mean, I'm not going to lie. Both of my kids have been spanked, but what? not very You're going to hate or, you. Uh, that's gonna... Once or twice in their lives. <laughs> That has happened, and maybe it's wrong. It's not ideal, um, but you know, like I don't know. It's 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 we're not the same generation as even like our parents or a couple of generations ago, where I was like that was all they they had, right? Was was the spanking, and so um, I'll tell you this: my dad would not have talked, not had started a dad podcast. He loves this show. That's but great. I don't think he sat around the campfire as a scout leader and talked about parenting stuff with the other dads. No, I think they just <laughs> felt like, I mean, my impression is that they already, they felt more sure of themselves. Like they did what their parents did, what they were taught. They didn't think about, should we do this differently or not? And they, I don't know, they just seem to have more confidence in their parenting, whereas we're all exploring and trying to like find the ideal way of doing it. That. That's knowledge overload, right? Like that's a hundred percent knowledge overload. They, to your point, they kind of they parented in silos. I parent this way because my mom parented this way because they're parented. Right. Now I've got the information oh at my, my finger, the whole world's in front at my fingertips. And if I read that, you know, more than two hours of screen time a day will melt my child's brain. Well, now I'm a terrible parent at two hour, one minute. Yeah. And some parents right now are losing their shit going, how dare you let them watch two hours of screen time? <laughs> I know, I know. It, that's a rough one. The screen, well, they, our parents also didn't have as many kinds of screens that we could be referred to. <laughs> um, nope. You know, it was TV and maybe like a Nintendo or something. And now there's screens everywhere and they're always available. And it, that makes it harder for us, I think, in a bunch of ways. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pivot here. Pivot. Away. Why not? Uh, do you have a pen? Because I have a million dollar idea for you. All right. Here's my pen. Got my you actually got one? Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is totally unscripted. She doesn't know I'm going to go with this. I okay. actually didn't warn her in the prep. Uh, uh -huh. Have you considered dad cave TV? <gasps> You're blowing my mind. You know, I when I started mom cave, <laughs> there was, um, it was three moms and a dad that we all started the channel together. Right. And um, we all still work together, but I'm I'm the one that sort of has spearheaded it as as a a network. Um, and so we ha had a great dad who still is a little involved in mom cave called Sib. His name is Sib. And so when he wrote a blog, I would always put it as like from the dad cave was what we called it when he did his blogs. So maybe right. that's what we should call it now. And you, you can be from the dad cave, but mm -hmm. the dad cave. It's a good idea. Right. I right. And to be fair, I did a little research for you. There's like a few dad cave things out there, but it's all shit. It's all terrible. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, good. It is. Well, it, you it, know, go ahead. when I named mom cave at first, um, somebody, well, we, we all like brainstormed names for a long time and, and not mom cave was the one we, we landed on. And then somebody was like, I just don't understand why they would name it that. Cause it's a, Mom cave is a play on the word man cave and mom cave is not for men. And I was like, you're not getting it. Like they, that's the exact point. Like yeah. <laughs> men get, they have this concept of a man cave, but we don't really have that. So the mom cave is where we can like be non Pinterest moms and have our cave. Yeah. You can bro out. Yeah. I'm, bro. We're broing as moms. Broing out as moms. Exactly. Yeah, totally. Right. <laughs> okay. In that vein, in mm -hmm. that vein, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna share a headline 
uh, from a recent uh, post on Mom Cave TV. Mm. Mom, laugh your hoo ha off with YouTube women comedy. Mom, Mom Cave was conceived, get it, conceived as a YouTube channel of snarky comedies for moms. But we've grown into a community, a virtual mom cave of mamas who use humor to get through the day in videos of hot dads doing chores. Don't hurt either. Um, <laughs> as an ugly dad, I take offense to this post. <laughs> I'm so sorry. This is First offensive. of all, any dad doing chores makes me hot. Okay. So I don't care really. The hotter they are, the better, obviously. Come on. If we're going to, you know, I'm sure you feel that way about women, but. I don't. See, see the uglier, the better, in my opinion. Okay. Good for you. Why are you laughing? Because that's hilarious. Okay. Anybody doing <laughs> chores in my house that isn't me gets me excited for sure. Don't don't say that because you have kids, you have relatives come over. You can't say not in the same vein. No, not, not in the same vein. So that 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 joke that there about the hot dads was we it's have offensive, a video. Yes. Yeah, it's it's offensive to you, and I apologize. And thank you. Um. I let's, apologize. Uh, let's, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. And let me solo you for the let me solo you for the apology. Okay, go ahead. Tell I you. apologize if it's offensive, but I don't apologize for the fact that it is hilarious because we no, had this a idea -apology. to make um I know. We made a video called Porn for Moms and it we had we didn't know any actual hot hot dads. So we had a casting and we hired models to be they were dads, but they were I they saw were that video. None of those guys were dads. Of oh, they were. Of course, someone's gonna call me in, on my phone that I don't know how to turn off while we're doing. That's okay. It. Let me just ignore that. It's the beauty of this. It's the beauty of podcasting. Yes. Actually, it's my husband, so I'm just gonna text him and say I'm busy. I'm busy. Please leave a message. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna answer right here live. Why not? Hi. Guess what? Hello. No. Hello. He hung up because he was like, she's not. He heard the answering machine. He heard the answering machine. Right. Hello. He's driving. He's you've, driving. Reached. you've reached your house where your wife is not available for talking. <laughs> Do you edit this? I sure hope so. Nope. Oh, great. Okay, world. This is life. This is marriage. Obviously. Well, that, but the, the, honestly, like, right, when I, I do it. this, I, I've often, I look. I am recording from my mom's basement. I joke a lot about the furniture, things like that. My mom broke her hip a few weeks ago. I've been, Aww. it's okay. Uh, she's doing fine, but I work from here uh, and I uh, to help her out and be available. So I've kind of moved my station uh, awesome. into her basement. I have a bird just off camera that I've never had before because mom's got a bird. Uh, I have a three-year-old who runs around and occasionally crashes. It's parenting. It is. It's real. Right. It's, 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 and, and it's I don't real. do, I don't go live. I record, um, but I record for, for convenience for me. So I don't mind the interruptions. They happen. That's great. That's great. I think it makes life more, you know, it makes it real. It is. Well, I think it makes it accessible. I mean, like, look, I, I can't tell you how many people have, have talked to me about wanting to podcast after, being involved in a podcast because you're like mm -hmm. it's it's a good it's a good experience it's it's a fun experience um sticking with mom cave tv and i'm you know i'm we're just beating that drum i don't mean to pump it but i mean it's hey, it's your it's brand your show, dude whatever you want to talk about we're going to talk about do you have a favorite piece of material oh i mean that the one we were just talking about porn for moms okay the hot dads okay okay <laughs> well we'll skip that one though because that that hurts your feelings um yes <laughs> all those bastards had hair it was obnoxious i know they, oh my god one of them got, had so much hair anyway um the thing that you had up on the, <laughs> the screen before that said uh was about hoo ha ha and youtube women in comedy that was that yep. there you go that was one of my favorite things to do because what it is is hoo ha ha um is elizabeth banks female comedy website thingy um and they had partnered with YouTube Creator Space in New York, and they gave a, a few projects. Like they they gave us everything. They were like, "Here's here's your here's your budget. Here's your producer. You can use the studio. You can use the equipment. What do you want to make?" And so um, Dina and I had been doing Mom Cave Live, sort of something kind of like what you and I are doing here now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we'd been doing that for a while and they were like, but what it, it would be even better if it could be like a late night show for mom. So it was like, like Jimmy Fallon with a uterus, like that kind of thing. 
Um, so respectfully, that sounds kind of annoying, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah. but, you know, late night show. So, yeah, um, yeah, but- being moms, we had to record it while the children were in school. So it wasn't actually recorded at late night, um, but we got to do it in that studio. And then we had guests come and we did like segments and we did little skits. And we so it was a pilot and it's called mm-hmm. In the Mom Cave with Jen and Dina. And it was a ton of fun to make. Nice. Uh, budget sounds nice. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> I'll bet. <laughs> yeah. Anything you hated or regretted? I was like asking that question. About that project? In, in about- any project. Anything any you've posted uh, through Mom Cave where you're like, hey. mm-hmm. or it missed the mark, maybe like entirely? Yes. Well, you know, I try to be conscious of like being respectful that things that are on the internet will be there forever. Maybe my kids, they are real cute when they're three and be doing something silly, but as they get older, they might not like that being there. And so I try to ask them about anything that might be weird. You know, I have a kid who's in a, you know, the tween stage. So I don't want to make him feel, as he says, cringe. Um, so it is a lot of cringe lately. Uh, mom, everything about mom is cringe. So I try to be Are careful. Are you bro at home? Are you bro? Yes. In fact, I have a, I have a sweatshirt made up for mom cave that has the mama, mommy, mom, bro, you know, the progression. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, you, it's a yeah. solid shirt. It, you know, it happens. So is it available I'm, on momcavetv.com? Um, I believe we have to go through Instagram and go to our store what? on Instagram. Is yeah, that available I know. on Mom Cave TV Instagram? <laughs> yes, it is. Well, I thank uh-huh. you. Um, but what I regretted is one time we were at a hibachi restaurant. You know, like, <laughs> you know, hibachi? Yep. That's not what I regret. Hibachi restaurants are fun. But have you ever been at the hibachi restaurant and then they squeeze a bottle, like a sake, and it shoots out and they shoot it into people's mouths Mm -hmm. so you do that to adults right and that's a funny thing and everybody laughs well they had a bottle of water and they would do it for the children with a bottle of water and my daughter was like three and it was hilarious she was like a little baby bird going you know catching this water in her mouth i thought it was funny it was a family moment we were all laughing and i happened to put it on instagram and that was a big mistake for two reasons one people didn't get that i wasn't letting my daughter have sake. What, who do you think I am? I mean, it, you know, it, that it was water. So yeah. a couple of people were commenting, you know, how dare you, this is horrible. And this is the worst part, Joe, and I've never convinced this on the, I've never said this on the internet. I didn't notice until the people started commenting, the bottles that they shoot the water out of, the little squirty bottles. Oh no. They were, yeah, they were in the shape of a little boy and he was squirting. Um, in a in a very little boy way, I didn't even notice it at the time. Like I thought it was it's just a squirt bottle, right? So, you know, once it's on the internet, then all of a sudden you are a horrible parent. How dare you? And you know, so that that post I regret, but it wasn't really my fault, was it? No, that's that's entirely honest, and I think that's the best kind, though, right? Like it but wasn't like you guys were trying what the bottle was either. You weren't trying to be edgy. No, <laughs> I'm not that edgy. Like I'd love to be that ed- edgy you and were... be unapologetic about it, but I'm not, it was just stupid. <laughs> okay. So did you take it down? Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. I, I, I probably wouldn't have, but there were like some people that were really judgmental and I just, I'm also a sensitive person. Are you, so, how do you mm-hmm. have this kind of role and be sensitive? Not well, not well, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I try. I a lot of times I don't read comments. I, I, when things go viral, th- that's when you get the bad comments, right? Yeah. And yeah. I, so I, I try to avoid them because sometimes it hurts my feelings. But I, I, it's stupid. It's the internet. People say all kinds of things on the internet. It, they're all idiots. They're yeah. all idiots. I love the people who listen to the show. They're probably idiots. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we all are kind of idiots when it comes to things we comment on online, right? Because we feel free to say stuff we wouldn't normally say. If you are motivated to comment on someone's post outside of like a cute emoji or love this, you it's, you should it's time it. to move on. It's time to move on. <laughs> right. Like, I, it, it doesn't make any, I had a I had a post 
good lord, I tweet, I, I posted about uh, how I think Elon Musk is dangerous mm -hmm. only yeah. because I don't like his ability to manipulate the stock market by owning Twitter. Okay. And this guy went off full half paragraph about how the left has had so much control and blah, 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 blah. And I was just, I made one little comment and then I ended it and I, I blocked him, which was because the left definitely made abortions league illegal. Uh, and then I kind of left it at that because I'm like, who is this guy? That's why we have, a, uh, I have a policy for mom cave of no politics, no religion because people get so crazy and it's just divisive. So I'm like, forget it. Ooh. I should pitch a few articles about breaking that rule. <laughs> <laughs> it's also because like, again, I said, I'm, I'm very sensitive. I hate conflict. My husband loves debating and he loves politics. And he's like one of those watches the Sunday shows and you know, he wants to talk about it. And I'm like, this is not making me relaxed. This, if any, this makes me very unrelaxed. So the mom pressure cave, goes up. Yeah. Mom caves my domain. And, and it's as if, as if politics don't exist in the cave. <laughs> That's nice. I like that. Politics don't exist in the cave. Yeah. I think we'll leave on that. Jen, <laughs> you've been a treat. Uh, when I said to you, what do you want to talk about? You said, it doesn't matter. Let's be funny. I thought, That's a shit ton of pressure. Oh, I know. I know. Well, like, yeah. Then I started regretting it this morning. I was like, maybe we should have decided on something to talk about. I did a little research. I read some articles you had done and yeah, yeah, I try no, to take this quasi you seriously. You did good, but I like, I just wanted to hang out with you and talk and laugh. So we did that. Did we? Okay, cool. I think so. Yeah. Well, she is Jen at mom cave TV. Uh, you can find her at mom cave TV. Have I said mom cave TV.com enough? You can never say it enough. <laughs> I got to get one of those fancy backgrounds for mine. When it's okay, just I'm going to give a let's little reveal. Break the fourth wall. Ooh. Ready? Let's break the fourth wall. There's the the piano. Does that ever get you played? Oh yeah, my husband's a professional piano piano player and that's all my mess in my office, but we're just going to hide it with a nice back. You just drop randomly he's a professional piano player? Oh god, I have stories about that. That's another episode, dude. That's a whole The other wife episode. of a piano player? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, it sounds yeah. like a like a Hallmark movie as well. It's it's not. It's more the like that. Um, what's that? Of a piano. Spinal player. Tap. It's more kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> that piano doesn't it's go to rock. eleven. That piano doesn't go to eleven. Right, right. But our house goes to eleven all the time. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, thanks for letting me be a part of the Mom Cave experience, and uh, we'll do this again shortly. I hope. Yeah. Okay. Take care. Thanks. See? Okay, I'm gonna That's it. it. And this is the show. Uh, I told you she was lovely, wasn't she? Uh, just a treat. So, Jen, thanks for your time today. I greatly appreciate it. Of course, head on over to Mom Cave TV. Uh, continue to have guests lined up. Got more guests lined up for next week. Uh, so, we'll see which one pans out. If everyone bails, it'll be a Just Joe show. I've got some material for that. Don't worry. Uh, and also, I'm working on a year end special. We're kind of at that point where I have to start thinking about year end. I will not be able to do a year end round table like I've done last year because of my current living situation. Uh, but we'll do something. We'll do something fun. Uh, so I'm working on something for that. Stay tuned for all that. Of course, want to thank DeanBlundell.com, DeanBlundell.com, home of Canada's number one podcast, as well as yours truly. So DeanBlundell.com, uh, home of Canada's irreverent news. Let's call it that humorous news. And uh, I'm going to do something a little different here. I'm going to throw the mom cave TV up at the same time. Um, and talk about these two respective networks just for a moment. Allow me a slight diatribe. Um, I've had opportunities to be associated with a number of networks um, and, and talk to a number of different people, a number of different little partnerships. Uh, I have chose to align with mom cave TV and DeanBlundell.com. And if you're looking on video, I did my hands in the wrong direction because it's a mirrored image. Anyways, uh, both have core values that I greatly appreciate. Um, both are professional. Both have um, talent and and, and um, content that I'm happy to be associated with. So um, please give some love to Mom Cave TV and DeanBlundell.com. I greatly appreciate you, and I greatly appreciate them. And then finally, uh, I've got merch. I got merch. I got a little a little merch store. Sell some dad shirts. 
Zero Days Without a Dad Joke, World's Okayest Dad, Raised by Homer, Peter, Stan, and Bob, and That Nerd Dad, all in a variety of colors and sizes, available through the Dean Blundell store. Christmas is coming. Hanukkah is coming. Kwanzaa is coming. So, uh, be sure to hit that up and buy a shirt and uh, put $3 in my pocket. Thank you. <laughs> and that's it. That's the show. Be well, be safe, and we'll talk next week. Thanks for listening. Damn.